This is the 6th generation F-47 NGAD fighter. It is a $300 million large, high-performance, long-range, ultra-stealthy piece of American ingenuity and lethality. The most advanced fighter in the world, yet it was close to being cancelled and never seeing the light of day. But recently, Boeing has officially been chosen to build America's next super jet. Revealed by President Trump, this 6th generation stealth fighter F-47 is set to replace the legendary F-22 Raptor. Only 186 F-22s were built, but the Air Force wants up to 250 NGAs. The era of air dominance is about to be rewritten. The development of the NGAD fighter is expected to cost around $20 billion, and that's only for research and development. Building the final products while the fighters themselves is expected to cost $300 million per fighter. The total cost for 100 fighters would be roughly $30 billion. That's a total of $50 billion, including the development costs. And of course, the Air Force could aim for more than 100 fighter units, which could easily mean more billions to spend. Before committing the GDPs of entire states to one fighter, the Air Force needed to be sure that it needed said fighter in the first place, especially since new technologies were making other approaches to air dominance possible. Unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, for one, have been taking the spotlight in recent years. They're relatively cheap, highly lethal, available in an instant, and ready to swarm in large numbers. They've been more than decisive in the Russia-Ukraine war and have taken the interest of even China, which has been building an entire army of them. Another likely option was a general change of mentality in the U.S. Air Force from an agile attacking force to one that stays a great distance away and launches long-range ammunition at the enemy. The new $700 million B-21 Raider, the most advanced bomber in history, could make this possible. Armed with weapons that can take out targets the bomber can't even see, ultra-long-range attacks would be a breeze. With all of these in mind, the U.S. Air Force put the NGAD program on hold at the closing stages of 2024 for an in-depth review of the program. If the NGAD fighter was to be built, it had to prove itself worthy, and it did exactly that. Extensive war simulations showed that the Air Force faced greater risk and was less able to achieve major objectives without the NGAD fighter on board. The simulations revealed a need to keep persistent pressure on the enemy in forward areas and that a force structure centered solely on long-range standoff capabilities does not win major fights. The U.S. isn't alone in stocking long-range weapons. China is doing the same thing at a possibly greater pace than the U.S. The Air Force generals therefore came to a unanimous decision. The NGAD fighter wasn't only useful, it was also crucial to American air dominance in the future, especially a future that could feature a high-end conflict with China. China's air capabilities are growing at an incredible pace. While the U.S. debated on whether or not to forge ahead with the NGAD fighter, two new next-generation Chinese aircraft were spotted in the sky a few months ago on December 26, 2024. These tailless aircraft, they looked impressive, they looked soon to be ready, and perhaps most importantly, they looked like the greatest threat of the NGAD fighter. The emergence of the two advanced tailless tactical combat aircraft from China sent shockwaves around the globe and got everyone, military and civilian, talking. Exactly what role these aircraft are intended to fulfill isn't perfectly clear yet. However, the U.S. Air Force has been crystal clear that they're very likely for air superiority purposes. They could therefore be competitors for China's next-generation heavy fighter initiative. Like the United States, China is also building a next-generation top-of-the-line fighter tasked with ensuring air superiority over its rivals. Of the two Chinese aircraft, one is significantly larger. This could be the main manned next-generation fighter, and the smaller one could be its unmanned loyal wingman. The NGAD fighter, too, is expected to go into battle, escorted by loyal wingmen. At least two loyal wingmen per NGAD fighter. It appears China is, in fact, working on a toe-to-toe -to -toe rival of the NGAD fighter, and here's all the details you must know about it. Airframe 
The aircraft, which has now been named the J-36 by the Court of Public Opinion, features a large modified Delta Diamond-winged tailless configuration with prominent leading-edge extensions blending into the nose section seamlessly. It appears longer and much wider than its immediate predecessor, the fifth-generation J-20 fighter jet. It appears to be much stealthier, too. It lacks tails, canards, and strakes, doing away with those features that could bounce radar waves back to the source and give away the aircraft's presence and location. The tailless design can also significantly enhance efficiency and performance during cruise, but the aircraft would pay greatly for it in terms of agility if something isn't done. But of course, something was done. The trailing edge of the aircraft features no less than 15 individual segmented control surfaces with split 11s, ensuring the aircraft retains full control of its movement, yaw, pitch, roll, air braking, and so on. The aircraft has a weapons bay longer and likely deeper than that found on the J-20, so it will provide ample space for all sorts of munitions, small, medium, large, and ultra-large. Like all recent top-tier fighters, it could feature additional side bays for air-to-air -air weaponry and an optional rotary weapons rack to really drive its destructive point home. The total amount of ammunition the fighter will hold remains unknown, but it'll likely to be well into the tens of thousands of pounds, enough to destroy entire cities. Sensors while the sensor capabilities of this fighter are currently anyone's guess or a psychic's vision, two features spotted point directly to intended or present systems. First are the two large antenna apertures on either side of the aircraft's nose. These look exactly like sideways-looking aerial radar array apertures, SLAR for short. Three arrays, one on each side of the nose, paired with an array in the front of the nose, would provide greatly expanded radar coverage around the aircraft and allow for higher capacity to execute multiple array taskings simultaneously, including executing different radar modes, electronic attack, and communications functions. These arrays would likely be active electronically scanned arrays, AESA for short. The AESA's ability to electronically steer beams enables faster and more accurate data collection, multi-target tracking, and greater resilience to jamming compared to traditional mechanically scanned radars. For this reason, AESA has been the top pick in aircraft manufacturing buildings around the world. The larger the radar, the better. The sheer size of the nose of China's J-36 hints at a massive AESA radar. With the help of high power generation, an airborne fighter-like radar with that big of an aperture could be very capable as a sensor and an electronic warfare weapon. This means a high-flying J-36 would be able to track enemy aircraft and weapons, take detailed perpendicular synthetic aperture radar maps of the battlefield, acquire ground-moving target indicator, acquire ship tracking data of target areas all around the aircraft, and much more. This incredible situational awareness would allow the aircraft to peek into highly denied or highly threatening territories for a prolonged period of time without having to penetrate into them, it will see everything everywhere all at once. Performance the J-36 has a three-engine layout. This means speed, insane speed, and although it's impossible to say how much thrust each engine would provide, we can at least assume that the aircraft is designed to break the sound barrier like it's breaking bread or breaking bad. This means the aircraft would be capable of supercruise, breaking the sound barrier without the use of afterburners. At supersonic speeds, the fighter would get to target areas swiftly and more importantly, be incredibly agile when up against enemy fighters jets or missiles. For longer-range missions with the internal real estate to hold huge amounts of fuel, the aircraft can fly subsonically aside from a supercruise dash into its target area and out if needed. The engines would also likely thrust the aircraft to altitudes of 50,000 feet and beyond, altitudes from which the F-22 Raptor currently rules the skies. Such altitudes would enable the new Chinese fighter make the most of its weapons, which would have greater acceleration flying downwards, and its sensor suite which would have an incredible vantage point to view the battlefield from. All in all, the range, speed, and payload of the new Chinese fighter could put enemy assets at risk, from surface combatants to support aircraft, bombers to fighter jets, military bases to space stations. All adversarial elements would have something to worry about when this fighter enters service, but the fighter itself will sure as day also have something to worry about.
GAD stands for Next Generation Air Dominance. It refers to a new family of systems working together to ensure American superiority in the skies of tomorrow. This family includes virtually everything, new sensors, weapons, propulsion systems, composite materials, unmanned aerial systems, and a new sixth generation fighter. The entire NGAD family revolves around this fighter, the NGAD fighter to lead them, loosely borrowing Ben Parker's words with this great responsibility for the fighter comes great power. Power such as groundbreaking stealth. The NGAD fighter will build on the stealth technologies of previous American aircraft. Fighters and bombers alike, like the B-2 Spirit, the stealthiest aircraft in service today, the NGAD fighter will have an overall triangular shape, internally hold its payload, and have no vertical stabilizers. It is the first fighter ever to have such a revolutionary design. Vertical stabilizers had always been required to keep an aircraft airborne until the concept of active flow control came to life in the B-2 Spirit. Active flow control uses computer brains on board to constantly adjust the flow around the aircraft to keep it airborne, similar to how birds fly. Open Architecture if history is anything to go by, an aircraft can always be better. The NGAD fighter is built to be better than it is. Confusing as that may sound, it makes sense. The NGAD fighter will have an open architecture that allows it to take on new upgrades easily and quickly. This way, the fighter will constantly adapt to newer challenges of the battlefield that are introduced by the advancements of formidable opposing militaries like China's. To put it simply, the sixth generation NGAD fighter can be upgraded to become the seventh generation NGAD fighter in the coming years. Maximum connectivity. To swiftly gather relevant information about its surroundings and act on gathered information, the NGAD fighter is slated to wield the most sensitive sensors ever installed on an American fighter. The Air Force will do away with radars mounted on the aircraft for electronically configured smart skins integrated into the aircraft's fuselage to achieve this. Information acquired by these sensors will be made available to other members of the fleet, whether sixth generation or not, to keep the entire fleet of friendlies abreast of relevant information in real time. The Air Force fleet instantly becomes a tightly interconnected force in the sky, and it's all in large part thanks to the connectivity of its new fighter. New Spectrum of Weapons The NGAD fighter will be armed to the teeth. The fighter will wield conventional missiles, bombs, possibly a massive rotary cannon, hypersonic missiles, and laser-directed energy weapons that take out threats with high-intensity laser beams. Laser weapons, in particular, come with an entire slew of advantages over legacy weapons. For one, laser weapons have unlimited magazines as they can continue to fire for as long as they're connected to some power source. Two, they strike targets at a speed of 180,000 miles per second, the speed of light, the fastest thing in the universe, targets would be practically unable to escape them. In addition to these, the NGAD fighter will be escorted into battle by UAVs which can function as non-built-in weaponry for the manned fighter. These UAVs, known as Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCA for short, are the unmanned aerial system section of the NGAD program. They harness cutting-edge technologies such as autonomy, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to fly alongside and support manned fighters during their missions. These loyal wingmen can perform a variety of of tasks during these missions, carrying weapons and flying ahead to provide intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, electronic warfare and even striking targets directly. This enables a single manned fighter to operate with the might of an entire fleet and gives more dynamic options during mission planning. The U.S. Air Force plans to spend over $6 billion across the next five years on developing these CCAs. By April 2024, the Air Force had selected Anduril and General Atomics as the top two contractors to build the CCAs. Both companies now have full-scale mock-ups of their designs on display. The Air Force is expected to select a winning design in the coming months or years. The goal is to have a CCA design actually in production by 2028. Dozens of additional firms are supporting the program through the development of autonomous technologies, sensors and other mission systems, command and control capabilities, and more. Once complete, each CCA is expected to cost between 20 to 40 million dollars, roughly the same price of an F-16 fighting Falcon.
The Air Force plans to acquire at least 1,000 CCAs, supporting 500 manned fighters, two CCAs per fighter. The 500 manned fighters will be an interesting cocktail of the F-35 Lightning II and the NGAD fighter, as the NGAD fighter looks to replace the F-22 Raptor as not only the most lethal fighter jet of the US Air Force, but also as the most lethal in history. War simulations, Air Force generals, leaked footage, and so on have all proved one thing, the time for sixth generation fighters is now, and they're already here, with China and the US already in the race, building fighters that would not only dominate the skies of the future, but also destroy one another in battle. To help one of these nations swiftly build their new sixth generation fighter, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.